Hello and uh, welcome to our service uh, in uh, mid-October uh, and I'm going to start with uh, some notices uh, before we come to our worship. Uh, and the first thing to say is uh, next month, uh, the month of November, is the month of uh, remembering uh, and we are gutted that we cannot uh, gather in large numbers in churches or outside of churches. Uh, that just can't happen because it's not safe. So the question is what are we going to do? Uh, and we've decided on the building of a cairn at each Anglican church site. Now a cairn uh, is a pyramid shaped stack of stones uh, and each stone has the initial uh, or the name of a loved one who has died marked on it. Uh, and the building of these cairns of stones will uh, begin uh, in and around All Souls Sunday, which is the 1st of November, and it will continue throughout the 11 uh, days of uh, remembering at the beginning of November. Please do bring a stone uh, or invite uh, and invite uh, a member of uh, the community to do the same. Uh, a stone, of course, with uh, the name of a loved one or the initials of a loved one uh, marked upon it and help us to build this cairn uh, from the 1st of November. Our churches will be open uh, uh, during, those, uh, during those 11 days at set times uh, and those set times uh, will be marked uh, on the notice boards of the churches. Uh, we also invite you to light a candle with us each of those uh, 11 days, the 1st to the 11th of November at 7 p.m. Uh, uh, in the evening uh, in the window of a front-facing uh, room. Now, uh, the one other thing to say about remembering is that our online uh, services of both uh, All Souls Sunday and Remembrance Sunday uh, will happen, our online services, uh, and uh, an online mass reading of names, both of loved ones, who have, um, uh, who have died uh, and the fallen. Uh, and that reminds me that on the 8th uh, of November, which is Remembrance Sunday, uh, once the cairn is, is built, we invite you to return to it and insert firmly a poppy in it to mark uh, each of uh, the fallen uh, who have, uh, have died in wars uh, and conflicts past and present. Uh, other notices are that the Great Harvest Food Swap at Cashes Green Community Centre is underway uh, this Sunday, this very Sunday, uh, and, and uh, there is the launch of the Freezer of Love, which is a freezer stocked with food just outside the community centre on a pay-as-you-feel basis. Uh, please do support the Stroud District Food Bank whilst we're discussing that this uh, period, uh, this winter period where uh, they are even more effective than they uh, than their usual effective selves. Uh, please go to stroudistrictfoodbank.org.uk and you can see where you can help there. Uh, please do contribute to our Christmas uh, shoe boxes, uh, which is a uh, uh, a, a, a part of uh, Teams for You's organisation uh, and uh, families in Eastern Europe who simply cannot afford presents will receive shoebox gifts uh, of presents. Uh, and Jenny Carter uh, in Holy Trinity is the person to talk to about that. Uh, and lastly, uh, they, a very generous match funding offer has been made uh, in respect of our application for a grant uh, for uh, our online services and activities, which of course are burgeoning uh, at this time. Uh, and um, uh, that, that grant is for audio and visual and digital equipment. Uh, and we've had a very generous offer of match funding for that, which we're very excited about. So, uh, now we come uh, to worship. Let's hold uh, uh, a moment's silence. But first, let me say uh, that um, uh, I'm delighted that the Reverend Matthew Page uh, is uh, joining us. He's part of our team, of course. Uh, he's joining us uh, both in terms of helping me to lead the service and he's preaching uh, later in the service. So let's be quiet for a moment. The peace of the Lord be with us always. 
Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And let us uh, come to pray. The grace of God has dawned upon the world through our Saviour Jesus Christ, who sacrificed himself to purify a people as his own. Let us confess our sins together. Lord our God, in our sin we have avoided your call. Our love for you is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes away early. Have mercy on us, deliver us from judgment, bind up our wounds and revive us. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his Spirit and raise us to new life. In Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy. Sustain and support the anxious. Be with those who care for the sick. And lift up all who are brought low, that we may find comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love. In Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let all mortal flesh keep silence and with fear and trembling stand. Set your minds on things eternal, for with blessing in his hand, Christ our God. Yet born of Mary, as your bold on earth he stood, Lord of Lords in human vest, in the body and the blood, he will give to all the faith. His own self for heaven. Rank on rank the host of heaven spreads its vanguard on the way as the light of light. From the realms of endless day, and wishes the power of evil, clears the gloom of heaven. Beat the six wings, Sarah, Trevor beam with sleepless heart, till their faces to the present, as with ceaseless voice they cry, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. First letter of Paul to the Thessalonians, chapter 1. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to 
to the Church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers, constantly remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labour of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters beloved by God, that he has chosen you, because our message of the Gospel came to you not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit, and with, will, with full conviction, just as you know what kind of persons we prove to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord, for in spite of persecution you received the word with joy, inspired by the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has become known, so that we have no need to speak about it. For the people of those regions report about us what kind of welcome we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve a living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath that is coming. Gospel Matthew 22, starting at verse 15. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap him in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere, and teach the way of God in accordance with the truth, and show deference to no one. For you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then, what do you think? Is it lawful to pay the taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of the malice, said, What are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for tax. And they brought him the denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this, and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard him, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. 
I don't know if you've ever worked with one of those people who just can't stop themselves asking questions in such a way as to try and trip you up. It's the so-called double bind. Whichever way you answer the, tr answer the question, you could end up in trouble. Perhaps the best example of this question is the apocryphal lawyer asking the man, have you stopped beating your wife, yes or no? These types of people have perfected the art of putting you onto the back foot, making you confused and hesitant, and perhaps, most risky of all, of incriminating yourself when you've done absolutely nothing wrong. Such is the situation Jesus finds himself in in our Gospel reading. Is it right to pay the imperial tax to Caesar, yes or no? Answer yes, and he becomes a collaborator with the occupying force. This particular tax was despised because it was levied only against the locals and not those qualifying for Roman citizenship. So any perceived compliance would seriously damage his credibility. But answer no, and his whole message would be lost as he would find himself being dragged away by the authorities for inciting an insurrection. A double bind situation. Jesus, of course, is a much quicker thinker than me. If I were in that situation, I would probably end up in an almighty tangle of words, confessions and recriminations. He, on the other hand, flips the tables and lands the question in the very trouble they had attempted to place him in. Famously impoverished, he had no use of coins, but in getting the Pharisee to hand him a Roman coin, he shows the crowd that actually it is he who is in collusion with the Romans and not Jesus. And no sooner is it passed to him, then he minimises the significance of the whole thing by pointing out that it looks like it already belongs to the Emperor, so it should probably be given back to him. For a short story, there's a lot going on. The threat of arrest and possible crucifixion, the nature of authority and nationhood, and great tactical debating skill. If I can remember just one thing from this story and embed it in my everyday life, I hope it is that I don't have to accept the terms of someone else's question. Too often I find myself tackling some tricky problem, and only when it's too late I arrive at the realisation that I don't have to answer the question at all. In our current context, after months of changes in our liberties and everyday lives, a story about bi power and binary choices seems very salient. For most of us, it's unlikely that we've ever lived through greater restrictions than we have in the last seven months. Authority requiring compliance has been used with great effect to change our behaviour and lifestyles to prevent the spread of a dangerous virus. We have so much to consider as we contemplate where the restrictions have been to our benefit and perhaps most importantly to the benefit of our vulnerable neighbours. In my professional life running hospitals for the NHS, the type of binary yes or no question posed to Jesus have been much on my mind recently. Do I want to protect people's liberties? And do I want to protect people from harm? Both seem like reasonable questions, until we find ourselves in a world where they are, in part at least, mutually exclusive. For me, the past few months have been characterised by many difficult decisions and many compromises in every sense of the word. These types of yes or no questions are unhelpful in making policy decisions, where actually we do not desire one thing at the expense of another, but actually we want to improve the well-being of everyone by holding these tensions in a balance which is proportionate to the risk. Perhaps the most important message of our Gospel reading is that we are part of both an earthly kingdom and a heavenly one. Give to Caesar what is Caesar, and God what is God's. The story points to a better reality, where an oversimplified question becomes an irrelevance. In fact, Jesus' answer is nearly always to point to a better reality. As we contemplate our current reality, where restrictions on our lives are a necessary means of keeping everyone as safe as possible, then as people of faith, we must find how we live our, res our resurrection life in this context. To deal with the difficulty of the here and now by recognising a better reality. When I was training for ministry, I remember someone remarking 
that our role in this world is to stand in the midst of chaos and cling to something of the divine. I pray that as we go into this winter, with whatever it holds for us, we will be able to cling to something of the divine, and where we feel like we might be in danger of losing our grip, that we take comfort in the knowledge that as people of God, we hold this collectively and for each other. Amen. The kingdom of God is justice and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Come, Lord, and open in us the gates of your kingdom. The kingdom of God is justice and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Come, Lord, and open in us the gates of your kingdom. The kingdom of God is justice and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. So uh, let us uh, pray. And as we pray, let us uh, pray for those living under stress at the moment. Uh, we particularly uh, pray for those living under the stress of isolation. And we hear the call to love our neighbour. Lord, give us uh, the strength by your Spirit to do that. We pray for those who are living under the stress of uh, financial uncertainty, of not knowing what the future holds. We pray uh, again uh, that we would love our neighbour, uh, particularly our neighbour who's living under that kind of stress. Maybe it's us. Maybe we need the showering of God's love upon us at this moment. We pray for those uh, who are living under the stress uh, of facing struggles with mental health. Uh, we pray particularly for young people in, in that respect as we understand uh, that they are seeking help less uh, for this. Uh, so we do pray um, for all uh, who are suffering uh, with mental health struggles and maybe that's us. And so we pray uh, that uh, you would help us to love our neighbour uh, or seek help if we are in that position. Uh, reach out to our neighbour. Uh, reach out to our church uh, friend, whoever it is. Father, for all of us facing uh, issues of mental health, struggle uh, be with us help us to be a community that helps one another 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, show me the way and make me ready to follow it. Lord, show me the way. Give peace to my heart. For God, we entrust you to your tender care, those who are ill or in pain, knowing that whenever danger threatens, your everlasting arms are there to hold them safe. Comfort and heal them, and restore them to health and strength, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A prayer for hospital staff and medical researchers. Gracious God, give skill, sympathy and resilience to all who are caring for the sick, and your wisdom to those searching for a cure. Strengthen them with your spirit, that through their work many will be restored to health. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A prayer for the National Health Service. Jesus, who stepped into the midst of disease and despair. Jesus, whose presence was balm to the broken and distressed. Jesus, who instructed the weary to give him their burdens. Jesus, who instructed the storm to be still. May you be with those for whom caring is both privilege and duty those who leave their own families to keep other people alive, those who carry, send, type, install, repair, telephone, clean and plan in order to make sure the whole system works, those who are there in the final moments to hold a hand and utter a prayer. Send your spirit amongst them that they might know that they are the light that the darkness will not overcome. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your disciples, I am with you always. Be with us today as we offer ourselves to you. Hear our prayers for others and for ourselves, and keep us in your care. Christ be with me, Christ within me, Christ behind me, Christ before me, Christ beside me, Christ to win me, Christ to comfort and restore me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ in quiet, Christ in danger, Christ in hearts of all that love me, Christ in mouth of friend and of stranger. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong and nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy that with you as our ruler and guide we may so pass through things temporal that we lose not our hold on things eternal through jesus christ our lord amen and together our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. May the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. And Jesus came and stood amongst his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you.